Top Bird Talk. Thank you for joining me at the second World Congress of Prehabilitation, and this is Mike Grocott. I'm here in Eindhoven, Holland, with two guest stars on Top Med Talk, Professor Olli Lugvist and Professor Franco Carli. I will ask them to very briefly introduce themselves, and then, and then we'll talk about some of the highlights of the meeting. Uh, Olli. I'm Professor of Colorectal Surgery from uh, Karolinska and uh, Orebro University, and the Chairman of the Aero Society. Yes, Professor Frank Francesco Carli, and uh, Professor of Anesthesia at McGill University in Montreal. And, and you've been rather frequently described in this meeting as either the godfather or the grandfather of prehabilitation, which I think I would take as an, as, as an honour. Oli, if, if I start with you, one of the themes for me that's been going through this meeting has been the relationship between ERAS and prehab. What have you picked up on that? Well, to me, prehabilitation has always been a very great idea that fits extremely well with the enhanced recovery ideas that we have been developing over so many years now. It has several of the basic components that uh, fits with sort of the fundamentals of ERAS, which is you know, controlling stress reactions, improving the way that the body can react to uh, to surgery and cope with uh, with surgical stress through nutritional, functional, metabolic manipulations, but also adding to that, which I find very interesting, the mental aspects, which is new, I think, for many of us. To me, this is a, adds a, a very important and interesting component to the entire concept of ERAS. So for me, it's, it's it would be a natural part and part of the a very interesting development of ERAS for the future. Are we getting into ERAS 2.0? Yeah, I think we are in some some respects. I think we're learning a lot as we are moving along. We're broadening our ideas. But this one, I think, with knowing Franco for many, many years, I think his interest and mine have been very similar over the years. So I've been fully buying into the ideas behind this from the very beginning. And I'm just very pleased to see that it's now developing into randomized trials that we've heard about actually showing outcome data in a very positive way, which one really could suspect, but and now it's coming. So I think it's going to be a very important next step for, for enhanced recovery as well. And we've seen a lot of new and uh, interesting information. I mean, Franco, some of the folk here are very focused on exercise, others much more on the multimodal type approach. How do you think all these elements are interacting? Well, when you think about this, uh, it's part of the call it holistic, call it multifactorial part of a metabolic response. So if you think about for a moment, uh, apart from nutrition, which is relevant to metab- metabolism, I will say activity is really an extremely useful anabolic uh, stimulus. And when you think that our lifestyles now is actually becoming more and more sedentary type, uh, that's, a, that's a lifestyle, that's a stimulus, makes sense, especially in, in when you anticipate something stressful like a treatment for cancer, or you, you think about uh, toxic uh, chemotherapy, or you think about surgical stress. They're all the stress event. So in the same way, uh, we always compare with a marathon runner, right? For a marathon runner, if you prepare yourself for a marathon runner, definitely you have to train or whatever, any event. So that makes sense that you prepare it. Now, the question was is interesting is that ERAS, in my view, had not addressed this issue in the past. It's been addressed the issues of very much the pre-operative, immediately pre-operative, except for the education component. Now we have a really an opening, right? Pre-op. But I think the excitement is to really looking forward the post-operative. That, that's another missing target which I think the, the post-op will be the result of what actually happens in the pre-op. So if we do well before, definitely we have an impact on, call it outcome, disability. We call it part on, uh, apart from uh, post-operative complication. But I think also long-term in cancer remissions, we don't know. I think that has to be tested. I think one aspect that uh, is really becoming uh, an issue here or a very interesting discussion that I think is coming up is, are we going to see a period soon when we actually want patients to wait for their cancer surgery to get prehab? I mean, because we've been stressing and many very famous institutions have been making their fame from the fact that you can come almost the day before, have all your tests done and get the operation the next day. And maybe that's not where the future really lies for better outcomes. Yes, I, I would say it's always a question individually. You know, you just address this issue. I'm not saying that we absolutely now. Definitely the recent data from uh, Edinburgh, I think, from, uh, from England, have shown the outcome, cancer, cancer progression does not change 
even if you wait 12 weeks to operate. So, you know, this seems to me, and therefore you have a time to prepare the patient, especially the patient who needs. And, and of course, there's a, very, there's a fascinating tension here with a lot of the policy and the government-imposed deadlines which are driving us towards uh, urgent surgery. Now, if I could just ask you key highlights, sort of headlines from the meeting. So for me, the Godfather's talk, <laughs> Franco's talk yesterday, which was, uh, was very popular. Well, to add to that, I think uh, I heard of a very, very good and interesting presentation from a sports physiotherapist today. Excellent talk, uh, a lot of new things. Things, very structured, very scientific, but yet very clinical. Great talk. So great, great cross-disciplinary working. And the smoking cessation, phenomenal. I think really uh, very well crafted. And I think we should popularize through errors, through uh, because it made an impact uh, on, uh, on how you can actually talk to patients. And that's what's very important, how we convince the patients and not threaten the patient. I thought it was a brilliant that's that's to me was a for the day for the day brilliant so listen thank you very much for joining me this meeting uh, the third world congress we've just heard will be next year in london the second third and fourth of july thank you very much for listening to top med talk you can catch us on social media and at the website on www.topmedtalk.com thanks for joining me gents thank top you. med talk